Hello friends and welcome to my Caribbean kitchen. My name is Ria of Cooking with Ria and today I'm making my version of corn soup. Corn soup is a popular street food with the party goers in Trinidad, especially after a night of dancing and fetting as we say, but I can't attest to that because I grew up in a strict household, so there was none of that fun for me, unfortunately. But today I set out to create the most delicious pot of corn soup with fresh corn from the garden, along with local corn from the farmer's market. I even made cream salad corn from scratch to add an unrivaled creaminess, and I finished off the soup with chewy, delicious dumplings. If this looks enticing to you, let's get started. This in soups, um, it makes four quarts all together. Very, very strong smell when you open it up because it's so concentrated. Okay. But Here are the ingredients you'll need. Shaved corn, frozen, canned, or fresh. Two whole corn sliced into rounds. Cream style corn, canned or homemade. Dried split peas and meat, stock, or concentrated bone broth to make a delicious base. One carrot, one potato, and one sweet potato cubed, three quarter pounds of pumpkin cubed, and coconut milk. You'll also need a couple of tablespoons of green seasoning, and if you don't have green seasoning or don't know how to make it, don't worry, I'm going to teach you how to do so in today's video. You'll also need chopped pandania or cilantro, pimento peppers, and celery to add a finishing touch. Flour, salt and sugar for the dumplings. All-purpose seasoning is also recommended and I'll show you how I make mine from scratch. Now let's start the prep work. It's the most difficult part of this dish. Once it's done, everything else is easy. Here I'm about to try a new gadget I picked up at the supermarket. It's called a corn brush. You decide if this is something you need in your kitchen. What is this supposed to do? Thank you. 
I reserved one and a half cups of the corn for the soup and another four cups to make the cream style corn. Next we'll slice two corns into rounds and you can slice it as thick or as thin as you like. One, two, three, four, maybe four, every four kernel. So you cut in when you pull apart. One, two, three, four, cut down and pull apart. Next I'll move on to make the split peas stock. I'll add four to six cups of water in a saucepan over medium heat. I'll wash one cup of split peas until the water is clear and it's washed thoroughly and I'll add it to the pot. You may also add any non-salted bone-in meat for added flavor at this point. But if you're adding salted pigtails or salted beef, it is important to rinse off the salt from the beef or the pigtail and boil it until all the salt is almost all the salt is gone. Sometimes it requires a couple of boiling, and once that's prepared, you can add it at this point in the dal to create a nice flavorful stock. But today, as you will see later on, I'm adding concentrated bone broth instead of any meat. You may also use vegetable stock if you want to keep this vegan or vegetarian. Four cups of water, one cup of dal. Next, I'll make the cream style corn. And if this is too daunting for you, you can certainly use the canned version. I've added three tablespoons of butter to my pan. And then I'm adding a small onion chopped and I'll cook for a minute until the onion is translucent. Now we'll add two tablespoons of flour. How long do you have to cook that? Two, two to three minutes while stirring. How much salt? This is about half teaspoon of salt. Sprinkle of black pepper. Cook it for three minutes. Four cups of corn. Right immediately. After you mix well. Okay. Now we let it melt. That's a combination of one and a quarter cups of whole milk and three quarter cups of heavy cream. Okay. Next, I'll add two teaspoons of sugar, a couple of sprigs of thyme, one clove of garlic. I'll bring to a boil and continue to stir until it thickens. Okay, now we'll put it in the food processor or the blender and just pulse it to make the cream corn. We may not use all of this. Pulse it 10 times, I'm checking. So that's 20 times. It's kind of fine, maybe a little finer. That's it. Homemade cream style corn. Give it a taste. Mmm. Mmm. This green pepper has been in the video from the start to finish while I'm editing and I have no recollection of adding it to the soup.
This is for those people who told me to use a potato peeler. I really don't like it. But Sweet potato. You may certainly use frozen pumpkin or squash. When pumpkin is in season, I usually buy, peel, dice, and place it in the freezer in resealable bags or in those vacuum sealed bags. And it comes in really handy during the course of the year. I changed my mind. I like the potato peeler. We'll add about two tablespoons of the concentrated bone broth I bought yesterday in the farmer's market. And you can certainly use beef or chicken or any type of meat. Cook it in the dal to soften. So that's two tablespoons of the bone broth. Give it a stir. And we added an extra two cups of water to the dal, making it a total of six cups of liquid. And we want to boil the dal until it's very tender. It's still not tender at this point. It is tender, but we want it to melt down. Now let me show you how I made my green seasoning. Some of us Caribbean folks always have a jar in the door of the refrigerator, but today, Fresh is best. And for today's green seasoning, I'm using about four to five sprigs of parsley and cilantro, and they're fairly large. A couple of leaves of bandana and two scallions. To that, I'm adding two pimento peppers and a handful of garlic. Could be 12 cloves of garlic, I think. In the Caribbean, we measure garlic not by cloves, but by like a handful, a half a cup, a cup. We use lots of garlic because it adds so much great flavor to our dish and keeps us healthy. I'm 
And today I'm using an onion. I harvested from the garden and this was the result of planting an onion that was growing in my kitchen in early spring. For what I'm calling the finishing flavor, I'm chopping up two pimento peppers. I'll also chop up a quarter cup of celery leaves and four bandania, what we call shadow benny or culantro. I'm swizzling it because I do not have an immersion blender. Let's make it smooth. So it's smooth. How many cups do we have? Like six cups of water? Okay. And now I'll make the coconut milk using frozen coconut from the freezer section of the supermarket. And you may certainly use canned block or powdered coconut powder as long as it doesn't contain any preservatives or chemicals. I've added 14 ounces of grated coconut along with 2 cups of hot water and I'm going to blend for a minute. Next, I'm going to strain and squeeze the coconut to extract every bit of milk. Now that all that prep work is completed, let's start cooking. I promise you, it's worth all the effort you put into it. I'll add four tablespoons of olive oil in a large pot over medium flame. When the oil is hot, we'll add the onion and the hot pepper. I'll stir and cook it until the onion is translucent, about 30 seconds. I'll add four tablespoons of the green seasoning to the oil. Give it a stir. And let it cook for about a minute. Now I'll add the potatoes, the sweet potato, the carrot, and the pumpkin. Stir it. I'll cover and cook until these are tender. I'm reducing the heat to medium low. Number three. It's about three minutes. I'm going to cover it and cook it another three minutes. Now I'll give it a stir and, and I'll add the dal. Mm. 
Remember, this is the dal stock that you're using or meat. You would boil it with the dal. Now I'll add the coconut bill. Two cups. Cream style corn. It needs to boil for 10 minutes and then I'll add the corn. Stir it, please. You think that's a cold one? What? <laughs> do they do this in the movies when they do like potions or like. That is not a potion, maybe. I like the soup. Okay, cover it. Remove the cover, give it a stir, reduce the heat to low, make sure nothing is sticking at the bottom, and give it a taste. Time to flavor the pot. That's the base we created. Good salt. I'm going to add some more corn and the corn kernels. This is a corn soup, so we want lots of corn and the finishing up herbs. The bandania, celery, pimento. I'm gonna save a little bit for the top. Okay, half of that. I'm gonna add one more table, two more tablespoons of green seasoning, some thyme, and the spice for people who like all-purpose seasoning. This is one teaspoon garlic, one teaspoon onion, one teaspoon oregano. Uh, one teaspoon black pepper and half teaspoon turmeric so that's a uh, that's optional and additional and I'm gonna give it a stir it's very thick so we may need to add some extra water I'm just scraping up all the bits at the bottom of the pot giving it a taste for salt. I'm going to add the hot pepper. Should have been in already. So I'm adding four cups of water. I'm going to raise the heat to high. Raise the heat to high, bring it to a boil, and then I'll lower it to a simmer. And I'm going to start making the dumplings. It looks very lovely. The colors are very beautiful. You're seeing orange, you're seeing green, you're seeing yellows, and the red pepper. It's beautiful. It smells really amazing right now. Once it comes to a boil, I'll cover it and reduce the heat to low. To make the dumplings, I've added two cups of flour, one teaspoon salt, and one tablespoon brown sugar. I have mixed in this the remainder of the coconut milk with enough water to make about three quarter cups of uh, milk. And you don't have to use the coconut milk, I'm just, I just don't want to waste it. Grab and squeeze. to the center and do that until it's no longer shaggy. It doesn't have to be smooth, 
but you just don't want it to be shaggy which means that it's not fully incorporated one more time and we're done and that's it we'll make the dumplings now I pinch off a piece we're gonna make them very small then you roll it between your hands You can make it as large, as small, as thick, or as thin as you like it. If it's too sticky, you add flour. And that's it. Continue doing this until it's all done. An easier way would be to roll it, take a piece, Roll it into a long, thin log. You cut it as big as you like it. It's going in your mouth, so you make the decision. You decide whether you want it like this or like this. Have a lot of fun with it. This way might be easier. Now we'll put the dumplings in. in. Look at that dumpling lane. Who did that? Give it a stir. Give it a taste with salt, pepper, black pepper. And add more if you wish. I'm gonna give it a taste. Needs a little more salt. One and a half teaspoons of salt. Stir it again. Just a little more. So that's two teaspoons. I added a total of five teaspoons of salt. And when you're not using any bouillon cube or flavor enhancers, you have to add enough salt. Because that's one of the reasons that people add these flavor enhancers because they're not adding enough salt. If you add enough salt, you don't need all of that. Mmm, tastes perfect. Now I'm going to add the finishing herbs. Chopped bandania, pimento and celery. And let it boil for 10 more minutes and it's done. Seen all the pieces of the potato, the sweet potato, the pumpkin. That's an all natural delicious flavorful soup doesn't get any better than that guys I'm adding one teaspoon more black pepper That's it my friends. Thank you so much for watching till the end. Let me know below if you love corn soup. When was the last time you had corn soup after a fet? And are you going to try my recipe? Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed being in the kitchen today with me. Or learn something new. Share this video with your family, friends and social media community. 
Subscribe if you wish to be a part of the Cooking with Ria family. Tag me on any pics if you try any of my recipes. Until next time, cook, share, love, and be safe. Bye-bye.